So hey guys, welcome back to Not to Reviews. This time we're going through some more Ruby with episode three, which was one of my favorites of the first three because it was a, a little more lighthearted and it had uh, more uh, more of a focus on other characters besides just Ruby and her crew. Which I got it. To say I got the I, ship names. Oh dear, oh dear lord, hang on. Uh, so. I just want to go ahead and say that this was definitely a, a bit of a breather that we needed up until the ending, and then it got dark again because, you know, Salem. So before we move on, I uh, guess we're going to go through with my guest, Walkman EXE, who has some ship names for Jean and, uh, oh yeah. god, <laughs> Jean and Yang, yeah. I said I'd do it last video. I'd be remiss if I didn't. <laughs> so the official name on the uh, shipping Reddit is Dragon Slayer, and I can get behind that because one, I love the innuendo. I do. I just am not a fan of Yang the is a dragon. Yang is a dragon, and John's gonna slay that pussy. That's basically how it works. I, it, it it works for both characters, but at the same time, he's he's supposed to be Joan of Arc, not Saint George. So. I'll get behind it because the fandom is behind it, but I it mean, would have been on. it would have made a lot more sense, or at least been ha ha funny for me if it had been if that had been the ship name for like Sun and Yang, Dragon Slayer, because yeah, because you know obviously uh, Michael, who is the voice actor for uh, for Sun, is also the voice actor for the Dragon Slayer Sting in Fairy Tale, so I would have yeah. found that hilarious. Oh. Um, anyway, but Second yeah. up, we have have a uh, lost souls, which is kind of it, it's it's sad, but at the same time, it, it I, I find that people like Yang and John would actually grow closer together through loss than anything. So, sorry for stabbing you all in the feelings. I'm moving on. Okay, he he said <laughs> lost, not lost. This wasn't a Netflix and chill kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, they grew uh, closer together by watching Lost on the television. <laughs> They, 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 they watched all the seasons, and then they're just like, hey, you want to... Yeah, sure, let's do it. <laughs> uh, blonde Bombshells, just because it's funny. Yeah, that's that's about right. Uh, the Dragon Knight. I don't know what more you want from me. <laughs> uh, no, I, I actually, I, I can get behind Blonde Bombshells. I can imagine Yang wearing the tuxedo and John wearing the dress. It works. I don't know. I'm kind of partial to Goldilocks. Just calling them both Goldilocks. Crap! <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> the things you come up with on, on, on your own while I but struggle the, over here. <laughs> this boyfriend was too hot. This boyfriend was too cold. But this boyfriend was just right. <laughs> uh, all right. <clears throat> Now that we're three minutes in, let's talk about the actual episode. So, <laughs> I love this episode. I love this episode for multiple reasons, but uh, most importantly, because it's it's basically a Bumblebee episode. You get a lot of Blake, and you get some Yang in there, too. So, it's always good when we throw in a Yang or two in there. <laughs> that sounds so punny, and I'm not meaning it to sound... You, you just throw a Yang! <laughs> Yang tossing. Throwing Yang into the mix. <laughs> throwing Yang into the mix. Yang tossing coming to a sportsplex near you. Whatever. Um, I'm not going to so, say what I just thought. not going to say what I just thought. I will say what I thought uh, as soon as the episode began. It began kind of with the whole Blake on a boat. and All I could start thinking about was the Lonely Island. I'm on a boat, motherfucker. Don't you ever forget. Uh, Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you think... If you think that Yang is going through, like, post-traumatic uh, stuff, oh my god, like, the amount of rampant paranoia that's going on with Blake is uh, crazy. And I gotta say, I, I love, <laughs> one of the things I really enjoy about this season in particular is a lot of, like, the the side characters or the supporting cast, ah, oh, they are fucking amazing. Like, I Call love... Call Ishmael. <laughs> I love the ship captain! He's so cool. The captain and then, like, the the girl that I think is, like, the first mate. Uh, she may or may not be. But, like, 
I love those characters. They didn't have a lot to say, but like their personality is still shown through, and they were they were lovable. Uh, but yeah, their captain was awesome. Captain X, first mate, best ship in Ruby. <laughs> ten out of ten. Are he, isn't he a little old for her? Love knows no boundaries. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's gonna be like a captain, one of the captain's lines by the end of the freaking ship ride is "Love knows no boundaries." <laughs> Uh, chase her if, son chase her son don't let her get away i mean considering how do you know I mean, my name is considering, son? considering the 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 major ship that's actually on this boat at this particular point in time i mean i wouldn't be surprised if the cruise ends and it's just all right everybody thank you for being on the love boat yeah <laughs> All right. I, also said uh, this, I, I said this during the Ruby Bridge panel we had at ABC, but I, I will die laughing if they pull into port in Menagerie and on the back of the boat is just Black Sun. And then the minute they get into port, the ship sinks. Oh my god. Like, Sun's like, hey, so we should go see your family, right? And then Blake just walks away and the ship just starts capsizing. <laughs> Oh, dear Lord. All right, so moving on from that, uh, there was a lot of really interesting stuff that happened in this one. We got to see our first uh, sea or water grim, and that was awesome. I like to call him the Mushu, the Mushu Grim. Well, there's basically kind of like a, a wyvern type of, of dragon. Um, yeah. It did, it did, gr- <laughs> it drank its Red Bull because it grew wings. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Uh, my friend actually asked me, he's like, what do you what do you think we should call this? I'm like, uh, Sui Long. And he's like, what? I'm like, it means water dragon, idiot. <laughs> I'm like, just call him Sui Long. Or I'm, I'm butchering you. Chinese right now. If people who speak Chinese are going to hate me. but Or, uh, I mean, if you speak Japanese, uh, Mizu no Ryu. So, water dragon there. Yeah? Yeah. Same thing. Uh, or dragon of water is exactly. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, that cannon, though. <laughs> the the heavy cannon? Yes, the, the, the heavy cannon. That was on the awesome. Boat, the best I know thing. we're like jumping all over the place on this and not actually going with the uh, the timeline of the episode, but whatever. Um It's a good episode. It's a lot of hype. So, you got to watch so it. So surprise surprise. It so surprise surprise. Sun is there. Like we didn't know that from the opening that we've seen three times by now. Four yes, times if you there. watched it before volume um, 4 drops. Blake is heading home to Menagerie. Uh so uh Confirmed we will see her family uh, more than we did in just the opening. I love her dad. Her dad looks cool. Like, especially when he, like, pushes son away. I'm like, yep, that's her dad. <laughs> He's like, no, you were not good enough for my daughter. Boys! Boys! <laughs> I can't trust, I cannot trust her taste in men. Look who her last boyfriend was. Freaking Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, thank you for giving I mean, me the material. So, so I mean, if if you think about it, her last boyfriend was Adam. Uh, yeah, her dad has a lot of reason to to like be suspicious of any boy that likes her that likes his daughter. I so. I, I, I don't know because she also said you, the, the White Fang is something you're born into. So that kind of makes me wonder what her parents' motivations are. Um, uh, I mean, honestly, from the feel of things, it it seems like. They may have like been slightly involved, like on a minor scale with the White Fang, but they were never actually truly part of the White Fang. So I don't know. We'll uh, see. I'm interested in finding that out too. I'd like to think that her parents have nothing to do with the White Fang, or that they j- they left as one family, just left, and Blake was the only one that stuck around. Yeah. What do like, you mean, Uncle can... Tuxen's dead? <laughs> <laughs> that right. turns out to be a thing. Oh, good lord. All right, so uh, moving on from there, we get some more time with Yang. We did have Much a, we did have Yang, Yang moments. We get we get just chilling out in front of the TV, seeing how horrible shit has gone in the world. And uh, props to the people that did the newscasters. Yeah, uh, like I mean, you you don't really think about it until later, but like the people that actually had to do the voiceover for that, they did a really good job of kind of doing the typical newscaster but having to describe all this all this Carnage. aftermath <laughs> yeah all this aftermath and uh I, I i honestly like i was waiting for one of them because they had they had a rhyme there it was like um try as they might or something like that uh, as hard as they fight try as they might and i was waiting for the next rhyme and it didn't come and i was like damn it i wanted a rhyme <laughs> i wanted my third <laughs> rhyme 
Uh, they can't. Uh, things aren't holding together very tight. I'm like, come on, whatever. Just fucking find find another rhyming word. Yeah, and then we get to see uh, Tai Yang uh, again, which we only get to see like what, like five minutes of him in not even five minutes, like maybe. A I, I and love any time. I love any time that Bernie gets a little bit of uh, screen time in this series now because like Tai Yang is hilarious. Tai Yang is like you can tell that he's he's very much struggling with what's going on with Yang too. And you can see in a lot of his expressions and some of the ways that Bernie uh, does his uh, inflections with his voice that he's he's like kind of just barely hanging in there himself. He doesn't know uh, if he should incur like he doesn't know what's going to set her off at the moment. You know, so know he's walking on her or... or or push her. Uh, get angry like you he doesn't know what's going to set her off and he's trying to be very delicate about it and I mean to her defense she doesn't she doesn't really go off on him she's just kind of like she's very passive she's there but she's not really alive at this point and but but she does say stuff like thank you and I and you know in a way that sounds like I love you dad as well so she is still still very strings yeah she is still very much present in the moment but she's she's lost in the aftermath of everything that happened to her and uh for anybody that's sitting there going oh god it's just an arm why don't you go to a veterans hospital and check those people out and see or, how or, much or, or, just or, or, an arm yet, or a leg yet. will go better yet get the rusty hacks on your in your workshop sit down with your arm and just start going to town tell I... me how long it takes you to miss that I, I I don't condone any of this behavior. We do not. We at the we don't. Okay, we we, we do not, not condone this behavior. But, but no. no, I've I've had family who've who've lost limbs in wars. Like they mm-hmm. tell me, it is never the same. Like you cannot ever tell me that losing a part of yourself is like there's no excuse for it. Like no one. You can are ever tell literally me that... missing a piece of yourself. Like a a part of you is gone forever. It's not something that you just get over. Phantom pain is a real thing. Phantom pain is a real thing. It is very real. And uh but but one of the things that was really cool was that present that she got from Atlas and the fact that Ironwood personally made sure that it was crafted for her. That shows just kind of how much respect Ironwood yes. has yeah. for her. Yeah. And there did, are people... did you notice did you notice the art style for it though? Oh uh, no. It it, it uh, I looked at the art style for it and I looked at some fan art from a while back. It reminds me very much of an art that someone drew, uh, where it's Yang with her arm and it's uh, her arm has Penny's AI in it. So oh. it says salutations. I noticed that a lot of the, the like the elbow structure and just the the way they drew the arm looks very similar. I can't say it's the same because I can't give false hope where false hope isn't due, but it does I, I, if she turns on the arm at some point, or the arm just sits there and says salutations, I will, I will cry, I will weep, I will hug my computer or TV, and I will, I will fall over position. laughing. I will fall over laughing so fast. Salutations! You're back. <laughs> it's like, damn it! I just got rid of you. <laughs> Robot waifu is best waifu. Robot waifu. Robo waifu. Living that waifu life. All right. Um... Uh, but yeah, that that would be that would be awkward for Yang, just saying. Yeah. And then we get back to the ship, and up oh, the dragon has appeared, and now it's a fight, and Sun appears, and dramatic entrance, oh, like, dramatic dramatic entrance where he just jumps on Blake's head and, and kicks the dragon. The, in the face. best the the thing that really makes this episode shine so much for me is Blake's reactions to Sun just the entire <laughs> time. She is like so done with his shit. And what's really funny is, like, after watching all the Ruby Chibi stuff and how she's, like, shyly affectionate for Sun and Ruby Chibi, it's so funny to go from that to this now where she's just, like, Ugh, a distant, every time yeah. he does his normal Sun thing. Of, like, My hero. <laughs> exactly. That was great. I now love, you say it. <laughs> I love how, I love how, like, derpy he is. He is, uh, Sun is our little cinnamon bun. He was our precious little cinnamon bun. Just saying. Yeah. And, oh my god, just that whole fight was really, really well done. And seeing how well Sun is using his semblance now. And just, oh my god, the animation for his semblance and how beautiful that looks. And, again, cannot talk enough about how beautiful that Grim looked. Like, 
the animation Please. as well and how they used the terrain to their advantage that was oh. well thought out it was choreographed properly it, it was it's a definite step up in animation since and uh, then the dragon got stabbed by a ship <laughs> cannon <laughs> you cannot you cannot overpower our ship it has cannon <laughs> it has best cannon it has best cannon um but heavy it, cannon n- n- i ship heavy cannon <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but the, just getting to a more serious note on the uh, on the actual episode, uh, the fact that at, like after the fight with the dragon too, like we get to see how much the battle has shaken both Yang and Blake. Like the battle of Beacon really yeah. destroyed them. Like Blake has kind of poor son. If, if if we saw as you saw in volume two where she kind of blames herself, she says that her semblance is running away. Mm-hmm. And she has that small amount of character development in volume three where she's like, I don't run away anymore. And, and yet now she, she, she feels away. like she's run away again, and she's just racked with self doubt, and it makes me want to just be like, "Oh no, kitty cat, no! Just shh, shh, you're fine. You're beautiful. Stay the way you are." Which is why, which is why I think it's a good balance to have Sun along with her because he'll he's sit that, there and call her on her shit on that. Yeah, he's her positive reinforcement that she most definitely yeah, needs. that she definitely definitely needs. And of course, what does she do with her positive reinforcement? She immediately slaps it and puts it in a box. <laughs> and puts it in a box. And I love the I love the uh, dialogue that they have back and forth with each other afterwards as well because like she's like he's like why didn't you do this with your team or whatever? And I love that he has the complete wrong idea about what she's doing. He's like you're going on a one woman crusade against the, the white, white thing. thing. No, <laughs> no. That is absolutely not what she's doing. But, son, I love you for thinking that. God. Such a positive little ray of sunshine. I love him. Uh, um, but I also love the fact where she's like, well, what about your team? He's like, they took a plane. I told them I'd catch up. Do you think I could get Neptune I... on a boat? <laughs> yeah. You think I could get ne- ne- Neptune on the ocean? <laughs> I love that. She, like, opens her mouth. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's there's no way in hell. Which honestly was one of the funniest moments of uh, of Volume Three was like Neptune being super afraid of the water, and everybody's like, "But his name is Neptune." He's like, "I know." <laughs> I think it's going to be a recurring theme though that Sun just finds his way onto boats because he mm-hmm. he seems to like being on ships because everyone else, you know, like you see people Stow on the boat away who, for life yeah no you see people on the boat who even like some, some will be happy some will be like a little seasick but sun's just he's in love with the boat he loves being on the ocean it seems he's got his swim trunks and his flippy floppies he's flipping burgers while you're at kinko straight flipping copies man that's just that's just the sun way of life i'm on a <laughs> boat motherfucker don't you ever forget but yeah um i'm the king of the sea pass me the afghan <laughs> um, but on, uh, again on the serious note i'd like to touch on how this which is which this can even be a good lead up to the the next episode but um mm. i like how they actually touched on the fact that yang is seriously suffering from what happened like she drops a plate and literally about jumps up on the counter uh, she broke a glass, in fact. Glass, glass. And almost jumps up on the counter and, like, has a small panic attack. I mean, the battle left its scars. And I'm hoping that through Volume 4 we really do see them heal. So I'm glad that these first three episodes could really introduce us to the characters and how each of them is taking what happened. Like, John's, also, pu- John's pushing himself. Ruby's trying to l- be a huntress. She's trying to focus on what she knows best. Weiss is dealing with her douche family blake is on a boat that's... running away <laughs> and... yeah blake blake is trying to return home and see if she can piece herself back together and then yang's just healing at home she's already got a home she's all good she's not and, homeless and i can't stress how important it is and like again I, I gotta tip my hat my imaginary hat that i'm wearing right now to uh barbara dunkelman for her amazing performance so far this season as Yang because Absolutely. anybody anybody who has dealt with PTSD the shit that Yang is going through that's real like that's not a joke like that stuff happens you will wake up from cold terrors in the night having nightmares uh 
something just mundane like dropping a glass and it breaking will just immediately trigger that and then you've had a panic attack. That stuff happens. And I was honestly waiting for her to punch her dad in the face or something. You have no control over the trigger event either. Like Mm. what triggers you has has it could be absolutely random and pot and maybe the dumbest most mundane thing and yeah. you would not believe uh but moving on from that let's go to the darker aspects of this episode with yes. the return with the return to what i like to call salem's hollow <laughs> and uh so we're we're back at the table as it were and salem is actually uh working with sender i I guess that's the the healing process or whatever. It feels like like it feels like the torture process to me. Yeah, it does. But I, I thought she was talking about the little jellyfish thing at first, and then my second or third time watching it, I'm wondering if like she's uh, if maybe Cinder is being infected with like the grim stuff that Raven is or not Raven but uh, Salem Salem is covered in. You know, uh, I'm yeah. thinking maybe she put like something grim inside of her and she's like, don't fight it. Don't fight it. You know, so I'm wondering what's going on with that. And then, of course, we get the question, did you kill Ospin? And everybody's like, you didn't, you didn't. And then she says, yes. yes. And either half of them are calling them liars and are calling her a liar. And then the other half are like, oh, well, damn, he's dead. So. Yeah, we got that, and we also, again, re-emphasize the point that... Mercury and Emerald are not comfortable. <laughs> yeah, they are not comfortable there at Jellyfish all. Grimm comes in, you see Mercury press himself against the wall. Anytime it goes past them, they are like, nope, I don't want to be here, why am I here, can we please leave? Like, that is the whole thing, and... Wow, it's just... I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that means that... Because at this point right now, I'm thinking that... Emerald might possibly switch sides because I'm thinking she did not Cinder realize. might even switch sides because honestly, like she's getting put under a lot of pressure she was not expecting. Like, plus if if we know anything about Cinderella, it's that the evil stepmother she, she don't stick around long. <laughs> but yeah, she did. Um, it's a question of whether Team Cinder is going to stick around. Uh, at this point, though, like I know it's getting so dark with the villains and everything, but God. Damn, do I miss Neo and and um uh damn it. He I'm just waiting for villain. like what if we get a, we get a uh Roman. Roman, Roman Torchwick, thank you. I am I, missing I'm, Neo and Roman so much right now. I, I, I am like, waiting where? for the point that we get another shot of Salem's table and they're mm. just talking and stuff, and then you just hear this dragging noise like this metal scraping against the pavement noise. And Neo just comes in, just dragging a grim head behind her, just spits out something, and just chucks it on the table. Is like, I'd like in or something. I don't know. I'm just yeah. waiting for it. Neo she breaks her vow of silence and is just like, I'm gonna fucking kill everybody. I don't know if it's a vow of silence or if she just doesn't talk at all. But like, I still, I still love her. What again? My favorite skit, uh, going back to Ruby Chibi, was the whole Neo's Neo thing. We swear it's not poison. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, if you haven't seen Ruby Chibi, please go watch Ruby Chibi. Please it's do. adorable. Wiley Coyote. It is, Ruby Chibi is definitely what we needed after the emotional train wreck that was Volume 3. The Volume 3. Oh my god, the roller coaster ride of feels that we had. Um, also, uh, this is my big push to Rooster Teeth. If we do not see Velvet in Volume 4, I'm going to be so pissed. I will be too. I need more Velvet, damn it. More she velvet. better be in Mistral. Yeah, right? All right. Uh, so 23 minutes in, I think we're going to wrap things up. So thank you for stopping by for this episode of Ruby Talk. I don't even think we're going to call it that. I just felt like saying Ruby Talk, whatever. <laughs> Ruby time. <laughs>